Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with some more Dragalia Lost. Because there's a whole buttload to talk about because they have the version update coming up on uh, that's going to start here on the download on 12.22 is filled with a buttload of stuff. So I'm going to talk about it, give my opinions on it, and kind of go over all of it. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. It helps a whole bunch. Um, comment down below about what you're feeling about this update. I'm kind of surprised how much they put in here, especially near the end of the year. And... Uh, Subscribe to me if you want some more stuff. All right, so let's get into it. I also just got off of work, so forgive me. It, this was too important for me to <laughs> ignore, unfortunately. So if I sound a little tired, it's because I've been, it's been a very long day for me. But anyway, Tenfold Summon Voucher. Now will be coming, just like with every update, so that's good. The Kaleidoscope makes its debut, so the new, brand new mode that kind of sounds like a roguelike is coming on 1226. Begin with that. Let's see what some of it just to go over it. Some of this is already known though. Your adventure begins at level 1, but will increase in both level and strength as they collect weapons, worm print, and shared skills from treasure chests and defeated enemies. As you progress through the labyrinth, the labyrinth, uh, powerful bosses will attempt to stand in your way. Once defeated, they will drop dragons, which you can collect and shape shift into. When choosing an adventure and dragon to use, know that each stat will increase provided by castle facilities and encyclopedia bonuses that will have no effect in the kaleidoscope. Similarly, the HP and strength of your adventure as well as the stats of the dragons, weapons, and worm prints found in the kaleidoscope are unique to this mode. You can earn portrait worm prints by developing deeper and deeper into the labyrinth. What's more, you can trade any dawn uh, amber or dusk amber that you find along your journey for rewards like materials or weapon skins in the treasure trade. For further info, Check it out when it actually is released. Uh, cool. We already know a decent amount of this. At this point, I'm just waiting for it to come out. It's coming out after <laughs> Christmas, so that's going to be fun to make a video for. But that's cool. Next, which is uh, unexpected because I thought they forgot about it, but Primal Midgar Soma's Trial makes its debut, the first in the new series of high-difficulty quests to succeed the Rise of the Sinister Dominion. Primal Midgar Soma's Trial will be available on 12.23, so three days before Enter the Kaleidoscope comes out. Uh, we're going to get this, which you can see here. So this is the new um, style of hard events, and you'll also notice that he's in his, uh, Mids is in his human form. So that means that chances are all these primal fights will start with them. I'm just going to assume this based off the picture, but it's going to start with them in their human form. So we are actually going to see the final form of Zodiac, who's the only of the the only one of the um base dragons that we don't know the human form of so either <laughs> either it will be revealed to us that way or they're going to release it really soon which we'll see which one happens first but that makes sense to make this one the first one so let's see what it offers to play this quest players must have completed the quest setting off on the main campaign chapter 16 4 6 on the normal difficulty and any advanced dragon trial on master difficulty wow I'm being serious about this. Primal Midgar Summer's Trial will be available in standard expert and master difficulties, and rewards will include materials for crafting weapons from the new Primal Dragon series. This is <laughs> this is real. It's a new weapon. So the thing I kind of liked about Sinister Dominion, and then something that I also thought was kind of holding it back, to be honest, that kind of held me back from playing it too much, is the fact that um, because it wasn't weapons. And I was doing perfectly fine in hard events without a new weapon. Like the DPS change um, from Worm Prince is much slower than just kind of doing a weapon, I thought, I felt like. Uh, and because Worm Prints are Worm Prints, I was like, eh, it's fine. I don't really need to focus that badly on them. So I was able to skip them, and I haven't really seen much of a change compared to the stronger versions of it. But this here is can't be ignored. New weapons mean I much stronger everyone. How much stronger? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But if it's like the change from High Dragon Trials to Agido, I'm going to assume the Agido weapons are going to be null and void. That they are not going to be useful for anything now. Um, which kind of sucks, but it's okay because this next part... Skip even more quests with tickets. Players will be able to use skip tickets on the following quests starting on 1223. Uh, the number of skip tickets awarded by the daily login bonus will be increased to 12. So you're going to be able to use finally skip tickets on uh, all the High Dragon Trials, Midgar, Summer, Brunhilde, Mercury, Jupiter, Zodiac, on their Prelude Standard Expert and Master side. 
And then for the Agito Uprising, which this is insane, you're going to be able to use it on Standard, Expert, and Master Difficulty. You're going to be able to skip Master. <laughs> and then for Rise of the Sinister Dominion, because this is still something that's kind of being used, it's going to be used for Standard only. I just want to talk about this real quick. If there's ever a sign that... I think this is good for one of two reasons, the reasons they're doing this. One, I really do think that these new weapons are going to invalidate the Agito, similar that, uh, similar to the way that the High Dragon Trial. The problem is, is that if that happened, it would mean that the player progression now kind of goes like you need to get a High Dragon Trial weapon, which funny enough, you can actually skip. No, actually, you mm, kind of depends. You would have to get from, go from from a new player who does not go into a reddit or anything or doesn't know. Like everyone knows here that the Agito are usually easier to get than the high dragon trial weapons and they're stronger. But let's say you're completely new. The progression that you see it as is I have to get the high dragon trial weapon and then get the Agito weapon and then I can get this new weapon. So that's your kind of progression right there. And at that point, it's, it feels like a little bit too much. But if you add in the fact that you can skip ticket it now, your grind significantly becomes less bothered to deal with, which I think is a smart move on their part because they've realized how do we get people strong enough to get to the next level of hard events? And the answer is what if we let them skip? And I think that's a pretty good move on their part, to be honest. Um... But it's specifically solo, so if you can't beat it solo, you still have to do it for- you're gonna have to still do it for co-op and do it that way. Um, I like it. I like that they did this. I honestly think that they should have done this with Advanced Dragon Trials a long time ago. But it's good that they're doing it now. Um, and I like it. So let's continue on. Stretch your stamina farther with reduced cost. Stamina cost of the following quest will be reduced on 1223. Please note that the change does not affect the amount of stamina recovered from the 30 day pack recovery or from the use of worm or honey, nor does it affect the type, amount, or rate of drop rewards. So, the Agito Uprising is getting a um, stamina cost down from all of the elements, so standard, expert, master. It rises to the Sinister Dominion, just the standard version, which is interesting. Um, they still want you to specifically. <laughs> This also makes me feel like, hey, you should really get some of the Rise of the Sinister Dominion prints, because hey, I think this is going to be very useful for what you're going to use for the future here. Um, trade for more rewards from the Advanced Dragon Trials. The number of times you can trade for certain rewards and tre uh, treasure trade for Advanced Dragon Trials will be increased. Um, this change will affect the rewards for all of them. You suggested teams to start to set shared skills and more. Suggested teams and features that allow players to browse and copy teams, loadouts, and other things um, used to successfully clear a certain quest will support the use of shared skills. If you copy a team's loadout that uses a shared skill, you have not unlocked the default shared skill will be used instead. With the addition of the kaleidoscopes, players will be able to inspect equipped portrait worm print, not to set them. The HP and strength values displayed for portrait worm prints may not affect the, those of the portrait worm prints actually equipped on the indicated team. Huh. I guess that means the new art might confuse people, so hey, watch out. I, I think that's what they're trying to say. Anyway, some balance adjustments. Butterfly is summoned by Manane. Um, standard attacks, four strikes, and dash attacks will no longer disappear when coming into contact with a wall. Okay, good. Uh, Sandalfin finally can activate her <laughs> dragon and shapeshift, which is good. Uh, the way her AI works is that um, she will activate her unique shapeshift when the team does not require healing and deactivate it when she needs to heal. The timing of when Curse and Nihility is applied to adventures in some of the Rise of the Sinister Dominions and Trials of the Mighty Quest will be adjusted. Interesting. I want to see how that what that means. Maybe that means it's going to apply it a little bit later so you have time to dragon and completely ignore it. Um, if you go Dragon, you don't lose Sinister Dominion, but if you are Dragon, when the debuff of Sinister Dominion is applied, it does not apply. That's just kind of one of the weird ways it works. Other changes, the following events will be added to the event compendium. Faith Forsaken Part 1, Faith Forsaken Part 2, Summertime Saviors, and Twinkling Twilights. Daily damage rewards will not be awarded when Faith Forsaken Part 2 is played through the event compendium. The Alberian Battle Royale is now available every single day, starting on 1223. The three comic panels that were selected in surveys for the release of issue 400 in Dragalia Life will be implemented on 12, uh, 1230. The New Year's voice lines will be available on 1230. 
to listen to them to Apple Press, you know that. Support for upcoming adventures and quest schedules appear in late December through January will be added and certain unresolved will be addressed. Support for upcoming adventures and quests scheduled to appear in late December through. So this update is going to have... Huh, so that's going to get data mined. <laughs> cool, so we'll stick around for that. As always, thank you very much. This is a pretty damn good update. Uh, this was an update I was only expecting for Enter the Kaleidoscope. But now we have a bunch of other stuff updated to kind of help with a little bit of the weapon grind and stuff like that. Very good job, Madrigalia. It's been a little bit... What's the right word for it? Dry as we kind of wait for the New Year's? I think that's the right way of saying it. It's kind of like... Uh, I think there's a post-anniversary lull where you're kind of just like, hmm. And this happens to every gotcha. I'm going to say that outright right now. Where you, especially Jigalia, where you play super heavy during the anniversary and now you're just kind of like, okay, cooling down. I don't have anything saved, so there's nothing I can really get hyped for, unfortunately. <laughs> Doesn't stop me from getting hyped for certain units, but I can't really summon them the way I would want to, so no, no sense in getting super excited for them. But I think that'll all change once New Year's hits and we start getting some free multis for um, New Year's, which I assume are happening again this year, and free mul free multis in general as they pass them out and stuff like that. Oh, there's be the ticket event where we'll get a buttload of tickets. Yeah, a lot of good stuff coming up, so I can't wait. This is a good update. I think this is a fantastic update. Um, had a bunch of stuff I wasn't suspecting. I really didn't think they were going to make this event in time. And good, in general. That's my opinion on it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can leave a like. Comment down below, tell me how you feel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Now, excuse me. I'm gonna go sleep. Can we get more... Oh, can I get more Yakuza Online vids from you? Oh, that's gonna be... I'll think about it. It's very... <laughs> Not a lot of people watch Yakuza Online. Anyway, <laughs> goodbye, everyone. But Yakuza Online's a fantastic game. Until next time, everyone. Goodbye.